Hey guys, what's up? Wigwam here in my brand new fancy orange and blue set, bringing you another episode of games I could make a million fart jokes about, but I won't, because I'm better than that. Today's special guest star is... Tailwind. <laughs> Tailwind is a challenging and whimsical Sonic-style platformer from Wind Limit Studios. Wind Limit Studios. Don't make fart jokes. <sighs> Wind Limit is a small, two-man development team, and from what little information I could find about them online, this seems to be their first major project. I found this game as I usually do, hidden in the dark, recessed corners of the indie new releases on Steam, a place where no one dares to go. Good reason. I was surprised at how visually stunning this game looked for how little interest it was generating. So let's dive into Tailwind and see what it's got. The first thing we should address is the huge influence from Sonic the Hedgehog. I was always a Nintendo kid myself, but I won't let that bias cloud my judgment on this review even if Mario is better than Sonic. The whole first world in this game is basically an homage to Sonic. You start in this nice grassy green world, the first boss is basically just a giant Sonic the Hedgehog, it's even named Gohegda et Sinos, which is Sonic the Hedgehog backwards. Much like Sonic, Tailwind is a simple game to jump into. You have only two buttons, attack and jump. And pressing and holding the jump button a second time allows you to glide. Each level features multiple branching paths, giving you a variety of options to get from left to right. You also collect feathers instead of rings or coins, and there is one hidden gem in every level for you to find. It pretty much checks all the boxes for your classic platformer. Apart from just beating each level, there is a time challenge and a feather collecting challenge. Completing both of these and finding the secret crystal in both levels of the same world will unlock you a bonus stage which you can reach from the central hub world, which in this game takes the shape of a village. There's not really much to the village, there's just two buildings and a couple of NPCs to talk to. One building is a hub world allowing you to jump to each level easily and get to the bonus levels. The other building, I assume, is your house and features a bestiary. The bestiary, however, is almost impossible to read. You have to read the book by standing in front of it and pressing left or right, except that causes you to walk away from the book. So you have to just lightly tap the button left or right so that you don't walk too far away from the book and stop reading it. A minor thing because the beast area is not really that important, but a bit of an oversight definitely. In total there are five worlds, each with two levels and one boss and one bonus world. This totals up to about four hours of gameplay to beat the game and six to eight to complete the game fully. While I say to beat this game may take you four hours, it's important to understand how you'll be spending that time. Level one through three are all extremely easy and you can probably finish all of them in about an hour. Four, and especially five, is where you'll be spending most of your time in this game. Sounds fine, right? Of course the later levels are going to be harder than the beginning levels and take more time, so what's the problem? I'll tell you what the problem is. Obviously I'm going to tell you what the problem is. The way Tailwind implements difficulty is the wrong way to make a game more difficult. You see, there's a good way to challenge players, and there's a frustrating way to challenge players. The hardest thing about Tailwind is not the platforming, or the enemies, or the levels themselves. No, the hardest thing about Tailwind is that you die in one hit. Random bullet hits you? Dead. You mistimed your jump by half a second? Dead. You jumped into an enemy that you couldn't see off screen? Super. Duper. Dead. Let's go back to the inspiration for this game. Sonic can be a difficult game. It has difficult levels and challenging bosses, but you have the chance to recover after getting hit by grabbing rings. Seems like a minor difference, right? Wrong. You take a hit, your rings pop out, it leaves you scrambling, panicking, there's that sense of urgency and excitement. That's where the pressure in Sonic games come in. Let's look at what I would argue is one of the greatest platformers of all time, Donkey Kong Country. We're not actually going to argue about that right now, that's a video for another time. By adding the system where you could pick up an extra Kong, and then instead of dying instantly when you got hit, you got a moment to breathe, relax, jump back into the gameplay, and keep going. This pushed the responsibility of death away from the game and made players feel more responsible for their own actions. You see, if you died, you had your opportunity. You got two chances, you're the one that screwed it up. And if you made it to the next area, you could pick up another Kong, recover that hit point, and you could just keep going. This adds a level of depth to the game because instead of it being either you suck and you fail or you're perfect and you win, 
You could be somewhere in the middle where you were good enough to survive, but not necessarily perfect. And Donkey Kong Country is still hard, it's still really, really difficult at times, but it doesn't feel overly punishing. It gives you just enough leeway to feel like you're in control of the situation. You see, a lot of the deaths I had in Tailwind just felt unfair. As I said more than a few times, I was killed by enemies I couldn't see because they were off screen right up until they killed me. And when I've just struggled to get past this platforming part for six minutes just to be cheaply killed by something I had no way of avoiding, it's frustrating. I didn't sign up for I want to be the guy, I just wanted to play a Sonic style platformer. And you know the biggest shame about all of this is the game does have the good kind of difficulty as well. The controls are tight and fine tuned, you can really tell they took their time to get them just right. The gliding mechanics are great, the attack works well and felt unique, plus all the extra optional challenges to 100% the game are a great way to add more gameplay and depth. Having fun bonus levels to reward players for perfecting a level is a really fun reward for players. You can also explore around in each level for these storytelling stones if you want to follow the full story for this game. And it's really not that this game is bad. It's not. In fact, I've never felt such a mixed opinion on a game that I've reviewed for this channel. The one hit death system causes me a lot of unnecessary frustrations, but the other core mechanics of gameplay are really good. Plus, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is one of the most visually impressive games I have played all year. The art assets all look hand drawn, the deep multi-layered backgrounds are visually stunning and hugely varied from world to world. There were a few issues where the spikes and other things that could kill you appeared to be in the background but actually weren't. This was annoying as hell but it only happened about two times so I'm not gonna fall the game too strongly on that. The only thing in this game that didn't look visually impressive would have been the bosses. They were well designed, but they looked for some reason as if they were drawn in a smaller resolution and then blown up to appear larger in the final product. So in conclusion, I can't really make a blanket statement about this game. I'm just too mixed on it. I would rate the gameplay to be mediocre. Not bad, but not really good. The story wasn't really that compelling to me, and the music didn't really leave much of an impression. Again, not bad, but not good. But on the other hand, this game is gorgeous. And the controls work really well. And if you like Sonic style platformers, this game is probably right up your alley. And if you're a completionist, you might actually really want to check this one out. If this review has left you on the fence, I would say, check it out. It never hurts to help out small indie developers and give their games a try. Again, this was just their first project, so I'm definitely excited to see what they can come up with next. But hey, that's just my opinion on the matter. If you've already played Tailwind, let me know what you thought down below in the comments. As well as if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. That does help me a lot. You guys have been so awesomely, majorly supportive lately. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the comments and the likes and everything. And if you're new here and you enjoyed it, hit subscribe. Stick around for some more content. I love all of your beautiful faces, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye Today's coffee mug was... Kentucky Kingdom 1990s. Why Tailwind and Wind Limit? What do you want? Fart jokes? You, there were so many other options. There were so many other options.